Mother, why did Daddy switch to Postum? Your father says there's no caffeine in Postum. Nothing to spoil your sleep. And your father knows best. Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by Instant Postum, the good-tasting drink that's entirely caffeine-free, and by Post 40% Bran Flakes, America's largest-selling Bran Flakes. There's something about cogwheels, levers, gears, and springs that holds a certain fascination for the male species. The feminine faction, however, is not so enraptured, especially when the aforementioned cogwheels, levers, gears, and springs are spread all over the dining room table. And that's the way it is with the Andersons as we check in on a Saturday morning at the White Frame House on Maple Street. Like this. Jim, you have a perfectly good workbench out in the garage. Why don't you repair the clock out there? Margaret, I'll be through here in just a minute. You've been saying that for the last two hours. But I can use your help here. Okay. Now hand me those tools as I need them. A uh, screwdriver. Okay, here you are. Now, pliers. Tweezers. Forceps. Scalpel. <laughs> All right, bud, cut it out. This is nerve-wracking work. Well, gosh, Dad, this whole thing sounds like an operation. Yes, and I'm afraid the patient isn't going to make it. Jim, those old clocks require a special skill. When Mother and Dad had the clock, they always Margaret, took it to... Margaret, please, I've just about got it licked. Say, Mommy, gosh, what's all this junk on the table? Shh, Kathy, there's a genius at work. Now, see the spring here, bud? All I have to do is coil it up good... And tight, like this. Now, as I hold the spring with the pliers, I want you, bud, to open the little door in back of the clock. Okay, there you are. That's it. Now, I gently slip the coiled spring inside, like this. Easy. Easy. No. <laughs> That's what I call making time fly. <laughs> Very funny. Now, help me pick up the parts. Jim, Mr. Timkins, the jeweler, specializes in clocks like this. Why don't you run down Margaret, there Margaret, you and... mind? I'll fix the clock. Yes, dear. Dad, since you're having such a tough time with the spring, why don't you put that in first and work around it? Well, yes, I guess I could do that. Where is the spring? The last time I saw it, it was flying over the bookcase and heading south. <laughs> here it is, Daddy. Oh, bring it here, kitten. Thank you. Now, the important thing is to get the spring coiled good and tight. There we are. Now, bud, open the back of the clock again. Okay. All right. Now, this is more like it. Now, I set the spring in like this. Uh, just a little more. A little more. Mother, guess what? Oh! <laughs> Betty, do you have to bust into the house like that? What's wrong, Father? Now, where did that spring go? It set a new record, Dad. It landed on the mantel. <laughs> oh, it was delirious. All of us girls went down to the train and met Ronnie. Ronnie? Ronnie who? Ronnie Kelso, the singer. He's only the rage of the whole country. Father, don't you keep up on anything? Not the important things. You mean the goon that croons? Quiet, Junior. And, Mother, while we were down at the depot, Ronnie's publicity man came over and said that Ronnie wanted to invite one of us girls to have lunch with him. And because I have a bigger collection of Ronnie's records than the rest of the girls, they chose me. Isn't that dreamy? I'd say you were very fortunate. Am I? Father, did you hear what I said? Yes, I heard what you said. Kathy, hand me the screwdriver. <laughs> but, Father, don't you understand? Your daughter is having lunch with the most popular singer in the country. Am I to assume that this is the same fellow whose records you play all the time up in your room? That's right. I question his popularity. <laughs> now you're taking an old fogey attitude. What? If you were 16 or 17, his voice would do something to you. It has done something to me, and I don't like it. <laughs> no one in this world, but no one sings like Ronnie Kelso. There's something about him. 
The way he sighs when he croons. Yeah, he sounds like a slow leak in a tire. <laughs> Mother, can't you do something about that son of yours? Bud, that's enough. You should hear him. He pants like a St. Bernard when he sings. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Brother. Oh, how awful. You aren't kidding. Where's that cogwheel that was here? Here it is, Daddy. Oh, thanks. Oh, it's probably for me. Hello? Oh, hi, Ralph. No, I'm sorry, Ralph. I won't be able to see you this afternoon. I have a very important engagement with... Well, with someone. No, it's not him. It's Ronnie Kelso. Well, it is. I'm meeting him in front of the Olympic Hotel at 1 o'clock, and he's taking me to lunch, so there. Now, Ralph, don't be like that. The only reason I was attracted to Ronnie is because he reminds me of you. The same mannerism, the same kind of personality, and you look quite a bit alike. If I was Ralph, I'd see my lawyer. <laughs> Certainly, I remember, Ralph. We have a roller skating date for this evening. See you then. Goodbye. Mother, can I wear your pearl lapel pin? Well... Oh, please, Mother, I must look my best for Ronnie. I guess so. Have you something to go with it? Let's see. Oh, I know. I'll call Janie. Now, don't start borrowing a lot of things. Oh, she'll be utterly thrilled to have her bracelet meet Ronnie. <laughs> Hello, Janie. Betty. I'm sorry, Janie, that the rest of you kids can't go today, but... What? Oh, yes, I know. I can't believe it myself. There, I'll be eating lunch, and across the table looking at me with those soulful eyes will be Ronnie. What a way to get indigestion. <laughs> Bud. Oh, Janie, Mother's letting me wear her pearl lapel pin, and I was wondering if I could borrow that new bracelet of yours. Oh, thanks a lot. Ruth's letting me wear that cute blouse of hers, and Doris is letting me have her black velvet purse. Margaret. Yes, Jim? Doesn't that daughter of ours wear anything that belongs to her? <laughs> Jim, yes, all sure. the girls do this. But it sounds like she's being clothed uh -huh. through the courtesy of the community. <laughs> Well, Agnes offered me your plaid skirt. If she lost her friends, she'd freeze to death. <laughs> All right, Janie. And don't worry, I'll let you know about everything that goes on. Goodbye. Well, I better get upstairs and start to get ready. Yes, you haven't got much time. Mother? Yes, dear? Where are those bobby pins you bought the other day? They're on my dresser. Thanks. Well, I'm glad to hear that we're contributing something to this momentous game. Now, with all the excitement having subsided, maybe I can get this clock in order. Kathy, give me that little round disc you have in your hand. This? Yes, give it to me. But, Daddy... Would you please hand it over? Okay. Thank you. I'm having enough trouble without you holding out parts on me. Now, let's see. It should go right here. No. Maybe it slips over this little bar. No. That's funny. This disc doesn't seem to fit any place. Maybe it's because it's a wheel off my toy airplane. Oh, no. <laughs> Daddy, I tried to tell you, but... Jim, you... why don't you take the clock down to Mr. Timkins? Mother? Yes, Betty? What happened to this picture of Ronnie I have hanging on my wall? Something wrong? It's ruined, completely ruined. Bud, do you know anything about it? Me? I never go into her stale room. <laughs> Kathy? Yes, Mother? Do you know anything about Ronnie's picture? Well... Come on. Well, Patty Davis and I were playing darts, and we needed a target. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen, you didn't. Ronnie's turned-up nose made a peachy bullseye. <laughs> Keeping Betty. Don't worry, she'll be home as soon as she gets fed up with lover boy Kelso. Shouldn't take long. Margaret, can I borrow your nail file? My nail file? I think you'll find it in the... Jim, you aren't back to fooling with that clock again. I thought you gave that up hours ago. I did, but as I was getting ready to take it down to the jewelers, I happened to notice something. See this notch on this lever here? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's where the spring is supposed to be anchored, and it'll keep it from flying out. Uh-huh. Margaret, you seem to doubt me. No, but I wouldn't start repairing it until I put on Bud's catcher's mask. 
You're getting worse than the kids. Look, I've got the spring all coiled up, and I just set it in place like that. See there? Perfect. Stand back, Jim. That was merely the spring settling in place. Believe me, Margaret, I've solved it. All the parts are in order. Proud of me? I'm proud of you, dear. And I could never have done it without your helpful words of discouragement. Oh, Oh, Jim, I'm not that bad. Ah, here comes our illustrious daughter now. How did you make out, Betty? Please, Father, it's not Betty. From now on, it's Beth. Beth? That's what Ronnie calls me. Oh, so that's it. As Ronnie said, a girl of my sophistication and cosmopolitan qualities should only be known as Beth. Betty is far too pedestrian. Uh, how was the lunch, dear? I wouldn't know, Mother. I couldn't eat. Don't tell me he was that bad. In Ronnie's presence, material things seem so unimportant. I'd say you were slightly taken by the gentleman. Mother, I want you and Father to be the first to know. From now on, it's Ronnie and I. Oh, now, Betty. I know. You'll say I've gone off the deep end. You've not only gone off the deep end, you've landed on your head. (laughs) Go ahead, Father. Make fun. In the first place, he's too old for you. He's not old. He's just more mature. And a little prematurely gray. But, Betty, this is only the first time you've met him. And it was just a luncheon date. Yes, but before the lunch was over, Ronnie was holding my hand. I hope he let go long enough to pick up the check. (laughs) Jim, please. And while he was holding my hand, the photographer took our picture for the whole world to see. Probably some publicity stunt. Publicity stunt. Father, you and your crass commercialism. That picture was taken to record the cherished moment when the paths of two lonely people entwined. Margaret, is this our daughter? Be patient, Jim. Be patient, she says. That's right, Mother. Treat me like a child. Betty, you've got to be kidding. Father, one doesn't kid about such things. I'll get it. Hello, Beth speaking. Oh, hello, Ralph. What? No, I'm sorry, Ralph. I'll have to call off our date for tonight. Now, just a minute, young lady. No, Ralph, I mustn't see you tonight or ever. It wouldn't be fair to Ronnie. Betty, give me that phone. Yes, I know we were supposed to go roller skating, and the very thought of it depresses me. It's so juvenile, so immature. Betty! If you'd like to drop by later, I'll explain everything. Goodbye. Betty, this silly business has gone far enough. (coughs) Ralph is a bird brain, but you did make a date with him for tonight, and you're going to keep it. I can't, Father. I mustn't. You get on that phone and call Ralph back. I won't. Don't you stamp your foot at me, young lady. Now, you call Ralph right this minute. I won't, I won't, I won't! (laughs) Oh, fine. Now, Bet, you can get a sack and help me gather up the clock. (laughs) Looks like Jim's clock was really fixed this time. But speaking of clocks, how about time out for Ed Prentice? He has some mighty good advice for you, especially if you haven't been in tick-tock condition lately. Ed? Say, friend, how have you been feeling these days? Have you been sort of jittery, on edge? Well, it could be the caffeine in your coffee or tea that's been bothering you, stealing your sleep and making you nervous. I know because caffeine bothered me plenty until I switched to postum. Good old instant postum. Why don't you make the switch yourself? Believe you me, postum really works. It ought to. It's absolutely caffeine-free. Contains no caffeine. None whatsoever. So you see, instant postum is a good hot drink you can enjoy anytime without risking coffee nerves, without losing your sleep. Now, of course, caffeine doesn't bother everybody. Lots of folks can handle it okay. But if it troubles you, Just make that simple, easy switch to Postum. Try Postum for 30 days. Why not? See if you're not sleeping better, looking and feeling better, too. Thanks to instant Postum. Oh, and say, the kids will like Postum, too. And, of course, you can give them Postum often because there's nothing in Postum to harm them. Yes, sir, Postum's the drink for the whole family. 
Get a jar tomorrow. Poets, songwriters, romanticists in general, from the beginning of time, have asked the question, what is this thing called love? Up to now, no satisfactory answer has been recorded. However, Betty Anderson, alias Bet Anderson, after a two-hour luncheon date with Ronnie Kelso, the popular singer, feels she has experienced the real thing. Jim feels that it's merely a question of Ronnie-itis and should disappear about seven o'clock this evening. As for Bud and Kathy, they just stand around the kitchen and ask questions like this. Mom, what's wrong with Betty? Nothing, Bud, nothing at all. But there's gotta be something wrong. She looks like a dying calf. <laughs> well, if you must know, she thinks she's in love with Ronnie Kelso. Oh, no, not that. It's nothing but a crush. A crush? She looks like she's been pulverized. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, bud. Let's just drop it. Will I go through that when I'm Betty's age, Mommy? I imagine you will, dear. I sure hope not. It's not so bad. But by the look on her face, it must be awful painful. <laughs> Someday, love will come to you, Kathy, and when it does, you'll know it. It'll be the most beautiful thing that has ever happened to you. You'll meet a man whom you'll think is the most wonderful person in all the world. I will? Mm-hmm. And this man will have the same interests that you do, and... You mean he'll like bullfrogs and tadpoles? <laughs> Kathy. Yes, Mother? I think we can postpone our little discussion until a later date. Say, uh, about 1960? Oh, Margaret! Look! Jim, the clock. It's all in one piece. Yes, it's all fixed. And Daddy. this time it's right. Just kidding. Daddy, Mommy says that when I'm Betty's age, I might fall in love or have a crush on a fellow. I hope not. Jim, let's not be bitter. Believe me, Margaret, I couldn't go through this again. Well, it's going to happen to Kathy, so you might as well accept it. Well, maybe when Kathy's Betty's age, there'll be a vaccine we can give her to prevent it. <laughs> Now, Jim. Have you seen Betty recently? I saw her just before she went up to her room. What a sight. She walks around listlessly, mouth open, eyes drooping. She looks like the ad. Don't let this happen to you. <laughs> I just hope she comes out of it. She'd better come out of it. If she doesn't keep that date with Ralph like she promised, there's going to be some fireworks around here. Want me to get the hairbrush, Daddy? I'll get it. Hello? It's for you, Bet. Is it Ronnie, bud? No, it's not the tonsil. It's Janie. I'll be down in a second. Who was it, bud? Janie. She probably wants to get all the dirt on what happened at lunch today. Yak, 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 yak. I think I'll sneak in and listen. Kathy, you be careful. Bud, what time is it there by the clock on the stove? I want to set this clock here. So you finally got it fixed. I most certainly did. And I trust that my perseverance and stick to will prove an object lesson to the scorners around here. What time did you say it was? Four o'clock, straight up. All right, I'll set it for exactly four o'clock. There. See there? <laughs> hmm. Bud... Get me the screwdriver off the dining room table. Jim, don't you dare take that clock apart again. But, Margaret... I'll settle for adding on a couple of bongs every time the clock strikes. At midnight, it'll be 14 o'clock. <laughs> Maybe uh, I wound it a little more. It isn't ticking, Jim. All right, you win. I'll take it over to the jewelers Monday on my way to work. Daddy, guess what? Betty is going to Cincinnati. Now, Kitten, you're making that up. No, really. I just heard her tell Janie on the phone she's going next Saturday. It's something about Ronnie. Margaret, I detest eavesdropping, but this should be very enlightening. Very enlightening. You kids stay here. Be quiet now. Yes. Oh, you're right, Janie. No. No, of course. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No. No. Very enlightening, eh, Jim? Quiet, Margaret. Well, you see, Janie, my plans are to... Listen now, Margaret. Uh-huh. Of course. Yes. Yes. No. 
I wish that Janie would shut up for a minute. <laughs> no, I haven't told the folks yet. I want to break it to them gently. Father? Oh, he'll hit the ceiling and probably stay there for three or four days. <laughs> yes, it's so hard to make him understand. Of course, when you get up in years like that. Margaret, I'm going to... Jim, just a minute. All right, Janie, keep your fingers crossed for me. Bye. Margaret, walk in as if nothing is wrong. Uh, hi, Beth. Oh, hello, Father. What's uh, new? Nothing. Excuse me, I have to be getting up to my room. What uh, do you hear from Cincinnati? Father, you mean you overheard my conversation? Yes, I was up on the ceiling listening in. <laughs> Betty, what is this Cincinnati business? Please, I have to get up to my room. You stay right here, young lady. We're going to get this straightened out once and for all. You won't get angry. There'll be no guarantee. Well, next Saturday, Ronnie's opening at the Capitol Theater in Cincinnati. And you're planning on being there? Yes, I thought I'd buzz back. Eh, you'll be buzzing, young lady, but it won't be to Cincinnati. Oh, but I must. Ronnie's counting on me. He gave me a ticket to the theater, and my presence will mean so much to his performance. You aren't going, and that's final. But, Father... The discussion is over. I'm sorry, Father, but... Well, I'm going if I have to run away to do it. Well. Margaret, this situation has to be met head on. Head on? Seems like we've already had quite a collision. Where did Betty say this Ronnie was staying? At the Olympic Hotel. But, Jim, you wouldn't. I wouldn't? Nobody's going to lead my daughter on like this. But, Jim, he's a celebrity. I doubt if you could get in to see him. I'll get in to see him. Don't worry. Where's my hat? Over there on the table. But, Jim, please don't lose your hair. Relax, Margaret. I know what I'm doing. I'll see you in a little while. <laughs> Jim, you can't go downtown in your bedroom slippers. Oh, well, where are my shoes? Under the chair there. Yeah, I got them. I'm going to set this pipsqueak right if it's the last thing I do. But, Jim, I don't like it when you get all steamed up like this and go off on a tangent. Margaret, don't worry about me. I tell you, I know what I'm doing. See you later. Oh, um, Jim. Yes? You've got your shoes on the wrong feet. <laughs> Mother, he actually went down to the hotel? Yes, he's been gone for some time now. Oh, this is humiliating. I suppose he went down to try and break up our romance. Yes, and the way he stormed out of here, I hope that's all he breaks up. Well, I have no fears. Anything that Father says will have no effect on Ronnie and me. Our bond is too strong. Betty, I only wish that... Please, Mother, bet. Sorry. Bet, I only wish that you would understand that... Wait a minute. What, Mother? Your father's coming up the walk, and he has someone with him. Oh, Mother, I'm afraid. Stay here, Betty. It's better to face it now. Step right in. Margaret, Bet, I'd like you to meet someone. This is Gladys Kelso. Hi, Bet. Gladys Kelso? You mean you're Ronnie Kelso's wife? No, I'm afraid not. Oh, thank goodness. I'm his daughter. Daughter? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, and he'd kill me if he knew I sneaked out of the hotel room. But, but Ronnie seemed like... Is he old enough to have a daughter my age? Is he old enough? You should see him when he gets out of bed in the morning. <laughs> oh, brother, you think women have beauty aids. He practically retreads his face. <laughs> Please, I don't want to hear any more. Now, don't think I'm being disrespectful. Pop's really a grand guy. The only time he gets mad at me is when I make him take his vitamin pills. All right, so he is a little older than I am. A little? <laughs> Wait till I tell you what happened in Seattle. A bunch of teenage gals were gathered on the sidewalk, and they wouldn't go away until Dad threw down a lock of his hair. That's when he got burned up at me. What happened, Gladys? I threw down his whole toupee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not amused in the least. Oh, don't take it so hard, kid. So he did hold your hand at lunch. Well, then you heard about it? Sis, he's held girls' hands from here to Albuquerque. It's all a part of the game. Well... What about the theater ticket? Oh, for the opening in Cincinnati? Hundreds of girls got tickets. That way we're sure of a smash opening. Remember, kid, a crooner is only as good as a squeals he gets. <laughs> I'll see who it is. It's Ralph, Bet. I don't want to see Ralph. I don't want to see anybody. Now, just a minute. Betty, you promised Ralph you... Say, 
that Ralph looks like a real dreamboat. Betty, come back here. Say, I was just thinking, I'm going to be stuck in town tonight, Betty. And if you don't want Ralph, I... What did you say? Why, yes, Gladys. I think Betty would be glad to introduce you to Ralph. I'll be right out, Ralph. Just a minute. Don't go away. <laughs> uh, going to keep your date, Bet? From now on, it isn't Bet. It's Betty, plain and simple. Yes, and at times, how simple can you get? <laughs> For goodness sake, eat post bran flakes. So good and so good for you. You know, that little melody reminds me that life is swell when you keep well. And I hope it makes you think of the new post 40% bran flakes. Because as it says, they're good and so good for you. I mean that because something wonderful has happened to bran. The new post 40% bran flakes have a delicious new flavor, a magic oven flavor that many people like better than any other cereal. Yet they still give you the important keep regular benefits that only a bran cereal can offer. So tomorrow or Saturday, when you go shopping, take home new post 40% bran flakes, America's largest selling bran flakes. They're so good and so good for you. It's later in the evening at the White Frame House on Maple Street. And at the moment, it appears that a state of normalcy is set in. Betty is out on her date with Ralph, Bud is at the show, and Margaret and Jim are relaxing in the front room. The only thing to upset the calm is Kathy, who is trying to amuse herself with her toy airplane. Like this. Daddy, watch this three-point landing. <sighs> Kathy, be careful with that airplane in here. <laughs> oh, Jim, these are precious. What are you looking at? I was just thumbing through this old album. <laughs> Look at these pictures, would you? Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Say they are a riot. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this fella here with his mouth open and his eyes drooping and an expression like a dying calf? That's a picture of you on the day you met me. <laughs> here she goes again. Watch her take off. Kathy, I told you not to fly that airplane in here. Wee! Let her go! Kathy, that plane will crash into something as sure as... See there, it hit the clock. Kathy, if I've told you once, I've told you... Jim, listen. Well, what do you know? It's running! <laughs> week and we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest selling brand flakes, and Instant Postum, the drink that's entirely caffeine-free. In our cast were Ted Donaldson as Bud, Gene Vanderpile, Rhoda Williams, Helen Strom, and Mary Lee Robb. It comes in a red, white, and blue box. What is it? Hot Post Wheat Meal! It has the picture of Roy Rogers on the package. What is it? Hot Post Wheat Meal! It's packed full of whole wheat nourishment. What is it? Hot Post Wheat Meal! It has a rich, delicious, nut-like flavor. What is it? Hot Post Wheat Meal! Cooks in just three minutes. Another member of the famous Post family. What is it? Hot Post Wheat Meal! It's the best hot cereal you ever ate. Hot Post Wheat Meal! <laughs> Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Dick Conway. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences on NBC.